I want to change the conversation with society about disabilities. It's not about overcoming deficiencies. It's about unlocking and celebrating human potential. When you do see someone with a disability, you always see them cast as like overcoming some illness. We're never the love interest. And I was going to ask you, was that real? Let me tell you, it's as, it's, it's, it's real as hell. Um, oh, okay. I was so, like, that's tough. <laughs> nice. Beard <Yeah>. gang. <laughs> exactly. So beard yeah. gang. It, yeah. it's, uh, it's unique. It's Thank giving you. very Amish. And, and I like that. Chandra Smith is an IT engineer and the newly crowned winner of Ms. Wheelchair to Maryland 2023. On this episode of The Chris David Show, she shares her triumphant journey to the crown and how she's promoting equity for people with disabilities. One in four people suffer from a disability, and that number represents nearly one billion people globally. This means that all of us know someone living with a disability. Chandra Smith, the newly crowned Ms. Wheelchair Maryland 2023, is using her platform to advocate for and bring awareness to the critical issues affecting people with disabilities. Welcome, Chandra. Thank you for that introduction. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, and thank you so much for coming on my show. Like, I had to give you a long applause for that. I had to give you just clap it up. You can't hear it, but I can. Because, I mean, I think what you're doing is just amazing. And, and I got to congratulate you. How does it feel to be the winner of Ms. Wheelchair uh, Maryland 2023? It, I am incredibly honored. Um, but with the crown, it sounds cliche, comes great responsibility. And I'm just proud to be amongst my Willie sisters who have all have tremendous mobility obstacles and things that they are facing themselves, but still find time to give back to their community. That's awesome. How did you now how did you find out about the competition? I found out about the competition um, while I was in NRH, which is a rehab. I was in rehab uh, to rehabilitate and learn different skills to come back into the community um, after having my amputations. Um, and one of the occupational therapy folks uh, reached out to me, sent me an email and said, you know, we think that you'll be perfect for this opportunity. It is a pageant. And I thought to myself, I'm not really a beauty pageant type person. I'm an IT engineer. <laughs> so I started doing uh, more research about the competition. And I learned that it wasn't about beauty at all physical beauty, that is. It was about inner beauty, and it was about leadership, advocacy, and strong, powerful women like myself with disabilities who also have a message and want to change the world. Now, tell us more about Accessibility Starts With Us. Accessibility is everyone's responsibility. And what I'm advocating for is accessibility in both the physical and virtual realms. Um, virtual accessibility is huge. Although we have America with Disabilities Act, it doesn't specify specific technical standards for websites and um, meetings such as this one to make sure that everyone can take part in those opportunities. So accessibility starts with us. It's about reaching out to the general public and I wanna train an army of accessibility advocates to do what I do by trade for work 
um, is to remediate uh, documents and make sure that they're accessible, for example, with dexterity issues, especially for those that are elderly, being able to go through a website with just only using your mouse. And um, coming back to the community, I just noticed there was so many things, websites, for example, that weren't accessible. Um, I remember going to a website and having to actually it's kind of silly, but in order to create a profile on this website, you had to submit a picture of yourself and mimic the picture of that the actual uh, avatar was doing. So, of course, it was like putting up the peace sign. I do not have the dexterity to do that in a missing left hand. So, of course, I wrote to the developers and said that you need to come up with a different way, an alternative way for people to validate their profile pictures because you're leaving out a huge segment of the population who want to participate in your website and in the activities you offer. I want you to tell everyone about your difference in ability and just let me know if, if if you don't feel comfortable with me saying difference in ability and you'd rather me say disability. Um, I prefer disability. Okay. Um, and what I say that is that I want to change the conversation with society about disabilities. It's not about overcoming deficiencies. It's about unlocking and celebrating human potential. So we are not different. We are just individuals who want to be accepted for who we are and not looked at as through the lens of our disability. It is the, It does not define who we are. What's a typical day like for you? Wow. So I was not born with my disability. I acquired my disability. So it is hard to imagine a life that was different until I actually came into this life, so to speak. Um, just simple things like stairs, for example, became an impediment. Making or typing on an iPhone was like an act of creativity to try to figure out how would I do things, going to the grocery store, um, just simple things that we do with our hands or we do millions of things with our hands. And so just learning how to live life differently than what I was used to. Now, Chandra, you've been very open about what happened to you back in 2021. Um, I want you to tell our viewers and our listeners out there who might not know what happened, you know, exactly what happened. Okay. I was doing a seven-day water fast for religious purposes. And on the seventh day, I passed out my body went through ketosis and it caused all my organs to shut down besides my brain and my heart. I was given, uh, I was on life support. I was given a 1% chance of survival um, to, as a life-saving measure, they gave me a uh, medication called vasopressors. And what that medication did was it took all the blood from my extremities and put it to my vital organs. Um, and then I was in a coma for three weeks. And during that time, my limbs began to turn black. And um, unfortunately, a doctor came in and said, I have bad news for you. I was like, how bad could it be? I'm alive. Um they said that your limbs are poisoning you. And if we do not amputate, you will die. So I had 10 minutes to decide whether or not I wanted to live or die. 
and I just chose life. So I had to receive um, three amputations. I have a above knee amputation as well as the amputation on my left leg. I've had more than 10 surgeries alone and I lost my toes and I lost my left hand due to sepsis. Um, because my limbs dying, it began to poison my body. Um, so when that happens, you you either amputate or eventually it would have stopped my heart. And I lost the dexterity in my right hand. I don't have the full range um, because I also had a stroke during that whole scenario. So what I wanted to know was while you were doing this fast, did you feel that anything was wrong with you? Did you sense anything during the fast? Um, yes, but I am a very determined person. As you see, I had a goal and I tried to press past that. But yes, uh, very tired. Um, I almost felt like I was dying and I literally almost died. So. Who ended up, you know, taking you in, like taking you to the hospital um, during that time? So I was at a co-worker's house um, for a party. And um, during that time, I broke my fast and I just fainted. And of course, they, you know, called the 911 and I they found me unresponsive. So I had to be medevac to the hospital at that time. And. My goodness, I mean, shout out to them for acting so quickly, you know, to get you, you know, get you the, the care that you needed. What I want to know, though, what advice would you give someone who's considering doing something like that? Um, I would say consult with your medical professional. Um, before you embark on any journey, um, because you just because you did it one time it was successful or someone you know might have done it that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for you health wise thank you thank you so much for saying that i i, I couldn't have said it better but thank you so much um now you, i know you were successful you, you are a very successful uh, it engineer and um what was i just was curious what was like like before um, your illness? Um, life was great. I just uh, been promoted. I work for the federal government. I was, uh, I'm in the intelligence field. I was um, offered a new position, ironically, or as faith would have it, or the Lord or something was preparing me for what I was about to embark on because I they needed an IT engineer who could look at assistive technology and get them into uh, top secret areas such as SCIFs. So for example, Bluetooth hearing aid and what components would need to be taken out and things of that nature to make um, the agency more... Uh, accessible or for those with disabilities because they were trying to hire more officers and um, who would have known that I would be in this position that I am now learning about 508 I thought it was a zip code I was like what is 508 but it's actually a federal mandate for you know what I'm actually trying to teach the general public to do and that's to create accessible documents and things of that nature, that everything that's dealing with the government and government tr contractors and things that are receiving federal funds have to follow WCAG principles. But this is not a standard across the United States. Um, so here's what, why I'm advocating. You right now are like the perfect interview because I was, just about to ask you about something pertaining to that, but I'm going to ask you something else, but then we're going to go back to that because that 
um, what you just mentioned is very crucial. Um, what gave you your strength to just, you know, to get through what you what you went through? So um, my I just lost my mother in April. Oh, and sorry. my mother, I'm a daughter of two uh, disabled parents. My mother had sarcoidosis and it is a debilitating disease that affects the lungs. And it's it's fatal 100% of the time. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with- Very Bernie. familiar. And, um, and it's rare and he had it as well. Yes. And succumbed to it eventually. Mm -hmm. um, so, and my dad had four strokes, but my mother, um, she never let her disability affect her. And when I was going, I was in the hospital, um, even though I couldn't speak or respond, but I heard her and she whispered in my ear and she said, keep fighting. And that's what I do every day is fight because of her. Thank you Sorry. so much. It's emotional. No, no, no. no <laughs> I'm going to be, but see, I'm a cream puff. Don't be fooled by how I look. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Don't be yeah. fooled. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, but, but now what I want to know is about the critical issues that, dif that, that disabled people are facing and what can be done to correct them. Because I know for one, ADA definitely needs to be up updated. I know where I live, there are a lot of train stations that are still not ADA accessible, and that's a big problem. Yes. Um, so it is not the fact that I'm a wheelchair user that creates the disability, but it is the world that we live in that is not accessible. Um, so there's several issues starting from, you know, Medicaid and Medicare and trying to the wait, the long waiting list for those. Um, housing is huge. There is not enough accessible housing for those who need it, especially those with low incomes. Um, the, I guess, renters um, act that falls under 504 needs to also be updated. Um, it took me seven months to find housing, not because I was on a program list um, or my income, but because the resources just weren't there. And even though they were calling it accessible, I would come into certain issues where I would get into the apartment if there was a ramp to actually get into the apartment and realize that the bathroom, although there's poles that you can use to transfer from your wheelchair to the toilet or to the shower per se, the doors weren't wide enough for my wheelchair to even gain access to. So it's just like someone gave you, played a horrible trick on you and you were supposed to be going to this party and, but there was a password and everyone else got the password, but you, and you're just sitting there looking through the door and you cannot participate with the party with your friends. That's how I describe it. It's like, it's there, but you don't have what you need to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. So um, also, I learned that those apartments, there is nothing that gives renters like myself with disabilities preferences to those ones that are ADA compliant, but still need some work. Um, they're given to any renter, which further lessens the resources available. Yeah. I have some words about that. I'm not gonna, we're gonna go along with the interview. I'm not gonna, <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna scare you off. Oh um, no, no, yeah, please speak freely. I, I will, I'll get there. I wanna get through the questions first, but yeah, that, you know, that really upsets me. You know, it, and it's the same as like when you go to the grocery store and 
you see someone parked in a handicapped spot and you know they're not handicapped and they're there taking up space. I have you one better one. Uh, the lines that, you know, you need to be six inches away from the car so that I can actually get out. Yes. Those lines are not a parking spot. When you do that, I have to wait for you to come out or find yeah. another parking spot just so that I can go where I need to go. Exactly. And that is incredibly frustrating. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we're, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to, you're not going to do it because, you know, you're, you're the woman with the crown. I'll do it a little <laughs> later. I'm going to put some people on blast because that's what I do here on my show. I, I you know. I stir things up, but in a good way. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to bring attention to things, you know? Um, you mentioned We mentioned earlier that you are an IT engineer, um, and I want you to tell us more about how you've been incorporating, access, how you want to incorporate accessibility with uh, virtual design. Uh, yes. So I have um, been doing that uh, within within my job, um, as well as outside of my job, I have uh, created different um, accessibility videos just talking about disability adequate. I've also done things where I discuss how to remediate documents. I have a Facebook page where I give the accessibility of the the week is like a tip about, you know, how to create PDFs, meetings, uh, websites, PowerPoint presentations and et cetera. Um, I'm also working with um, politicians and lawmakers. I met with Glenn Ivey and um, I received a congressional award from his office uh, because of my work in advocacy. And I'm planning to go to Senate and speak about different uh, things that I want to see as well. And I hope one day to be in a position where I can train folks how to become accessibility advocates and have a accessibility lab where people can go and see um, how to remediate documents as well as experiencing some of the assistive technology that helps people like myself with disabilities on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, you mentioned something, and I, I you're, you're, this is going so well because you're hitting on everything I want to hit on. Um, tell us about the curb cut effect. Yes. So the curb cut effect is basically about things such as Curbs, curb cuts, um, they don't just benefit people that are disabled. The elderly, people with strollers, walkers, joggers. Um, it is the principle about when you design for the eight-year-old and the 80-year-old, you will get everybody in between. It's about universal design and how things that are meant for people with disabilities don't just benefit those with disabilities, it benefits society as a whole. I agree. So that's I what agree. it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Universal design and how we all can benefit from it. For example, have you ever been at the gym and you're jogging and you're doing your thing and you're trying to listen to the news or this podcast and you are listening to closed captioning? That's assistive technology that you just took advantage of. Yep. Even though that's for the deaf and hard of hearing, mm -hmm. but as you can see, you can utilize it. I want to go shift gears a little bit, and I want you to tell me, though, about Ninja's Wheelchair America 2023. Tell us more about that competition. Uh, yes. Um, shameless plug. I do have a GoFundMe out there. <laughs> to um, uh -huh. actually um, cover the cost as well as additional funds will go to the Miss Maryland Wheelchair Foundation itself to help support um, all of our community activities that other ladies like myself are doing. 
But that competition is going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm going to compete against at least 35 other states. And it's going to be a series of interviews as well as our platform speeches and what we what change we would like to see in the world. Now, we're going to get to the GoFundMe because I was on your page. I've been on all your pages, by the way. And I want all the people watching and listening to do the same. Even the people who might not be watching and listening, who someone has to tell them to watch and listen, I want them to do the same because it's very important that we get you out there and we get you that crown. But now, speaking of the crown, some people did find that title of Ms. Wheelchair offensive, but it actually it's the opposite. And I want you to, to explain that for everyone. Um, yes, although the pageant is modeled after traditional beauty pageants, um, the, the term Miss Wheelchair is empowering, right? Because it shows that despite mobility challenges, despite my challenges, robots and, and setbacks, it's about faith in overcoming and doing great things and the wheelchair is just a symbol because representation is important so if for example i was looking under a news article that was written about me in the capital gazette and there was this lady who reached out and said her granddaughter is in a wheelchair and she would like to share this with her daughter and if another little girl can see me and say, you know, wow, she's doing great things, then I too can do great things. And you know, not only can disabled people do just about everything else everyone else can do, you know, it can be done possibly more efficiently, you know, um, from what I've seen, what I've experienced. I mean, um, just to give you some examples, there's there's a, a guy I, I follow on YouTube and he was born without arms. He's missing a leg and he's a drummer. He teaches drumming, you know, and then he's driving, he's playing ball, he DJs, like he does a whole lot. Um, his name is Trey Nub. And there's another guy um, I actually grew up listening to on the radio and he's his name is DJ Touchtone. He's a blind DJ and he's probably one of the better DJs that I've ever heard. Like, he just he's just awesome. So, I mean, um, I want to let everybody know, though, because on The Chris David Show, we like to be informative, and I want to take this moment to inform everyone to go donate to Chandra's GoFundMe. Now, the link is going to be on the show when you guys see this. Um, it's going to be right under our gorgeous faces. But if you're listening, <laughs> well, it's true. If you're listening to the show, the link is going to be gofund.me forward slash zero four season cash, season check, seven six, season cash, A as an ASAP. Once again, gofund.me forward slash zero four, season cash, season check, seven six, season cash, A as an ASAP. I will repeat that again because we're going to get Chandra out to Grand Rapids, Michigan. When, it, when is it exactly? When is the uh, competition? Um, I believe it's August the 23rd. So there is some okay. time. Yeah, okay. As, um... Well, we're, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to repeat that. that. Oh, oh, listen, I'm, we're going to get that money. So you don't, we don't know each other well yet, but. I'm a hustler. We're gonna get that one. All right. So I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I want you to tell us some of your hobbies. Like, what do you like to do? Tell us some of your hobbies. So I am an avid video game person. I've been playing video games since I was four or five years old. Now I'm into adaptive video gaming. 
Um, I actually did a shout out on my Facebook page to PlayStation 5 because they're finally coming out with an adaptive controller. And it's great to see more companies um, working towards universal design. So do you do any of the VR stuff? Um, like the I, oh, did you? Oh, hear me? Um, I haven't tried that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I okay. haven't tried that uh, yet on my own. Um, I actually did it when I was in NRH. Um, okay. They had me put on the headset and I had the little sword and I was just, you know, it's therapy too because you get to move around and do things and it's very interactive. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Yeah. What are some of your other hobbies? Um, so I also write, um, I write different poems. Um, I love to decorate. I don't know too many women that don't, <laughs> but You'd I be do. Surprised. Uh, decorate. <laughs> oh, really? And, yeah. um, I, I love to cook. I was vegan for five years. So, um, so I like making different recipes and things of that nature. So, and I feel okay. like, um, I also sorry. feel like as, as, as a woman, we have different superpowers, right? So one of our superpowers is to give birth. We don't just give birth physically in the sense, but we give birth to ideals and, you know, experiences. We just light up a room that's just who we are it's yeah. our superpower yeah and you, you have others too you know that you gotta keep on the low can't tell yeah everybody. <laughs> right can't tell everybody about those it's so amazing oh, yeah. that you yeah, say that sure. because this whole thing here like me doing this show it was a woman who had mentioned to me hey didn't you go to school for journalism aren't you doing you know, why aren't you doing something with that? And I said, you know what? Yeah, absolutely right. Because I'm kind of tired of teaching these badass kids as I was teaching. And <laughs> I said, you know, I'm gonna go back to school and I'm gonna do this and here I am. So shout out to my friend Tanya for mentioning that. Um, but now, Shonda, did you grow up in Maryland? I'm sorry. Yes, you off. Okay. born and raised, yep. Born and raised. Yeah, born and born and raised. What part of uh, uh Maryland are you from? Um, PG County, uh, as Shout they say, Pretty PG Girl County. County. Yes, <laughs> Pretty Girl County, Pretty Guy County. I love. I listen. I love the DMV. I'm. I I go down a lot. I you know. I enjoy it down there. Tell us a little bit about your family. Um. So. My family, um, I grew up um, as low income, as I said, um, my parents uh, had a disability from very young. Um, me and my sister are first college graduates. Um, I was able to go to school on a scholarship um, that was academic in nature. Um, I went to what people deem as a predominantly white institution. I graduated from the University of Maryland in College Park. Um, what else? Um, I have two sisters, uh, one that is 13 years older than me and one that is a year younger than myself. And I have a nephew who is four years younger than myself. And uh, we kind of grew up like brothers and sisters. And and how are they with um, everything that you've been going through? Are they, they very supportive and all? Yes, they have been extremely supportive. Um, they are the A-team. Um, every time I have to go to a doctor's appointment, they have pitched in to take me as I'm on the journey of regaining my license because I have to drive with assistive technology. And I have to, even though I've been working and driving since I was 15 years old, I have to now prove that I can do so. Right. And just for everybody out there watching, because I have people watching in other states, 
in Maryland, you can get your license at 15. Other states is like 18, uh, 16. Yes, yeah. you can get what's called a learner's permit. So you have to mm -hmm. still drive with uh, an adult or under supervision. And there's some restrictions in terms of hours that you right. can drive and things of that nature. But yes. Now, when you were in school, did you did you pledge a sorority or anything like that? No, I was uh, purely academic. I was okay. in science and technology in high school. I went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School. I was part of the science and technology program. I was a McNair scholar. I was in different honor societies. I uh, My career was like mostly focused on academics. Very nice. Well, but uh, wheelchair pageant is like a sorority of Willie sisters, as I call them. Um, we're our own little sorority. I like that. And, you know, um, you're going to have to tell me how to spell that because I'm going to put that in here as a hashtag um, so that, you know, people can find you and find the show and everything like that. Um, well, you know, shout out to the DMV. I love going there. I love the DMV. I have family there. Shout out to um, Autumn Joy. She's on the radio. I listen to her when I'm there. Do you like go-go music? Um, yes, I am a fan. Um, I like all music, um, awesome. except for metal. I, I I don't understand heavy metal, but um, okay. but other than that, I am a fan of all music. Cool. Yeah, I had a heavy metal phase long, long, long time ago. We're not going to talk about that today, <laughs> but I had a phase. <laughs> but I am back, you know, uh, it, it where I belong. Your head hurt. What'd you say? It, it didn't make your it didn't make your head hurt. You didn't. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like I, all I don't, the screaming. I don't know what was hurting back then. It was a phase, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it was one of those things. It was a phase. Um, but you mentioned something that I think is really, really important. And it was that anyone can be disabled for any reason at any time. What are the, some of the things that people can do to be more supportive of someone living with a disability? Wow. Um, there is a lot um, supporting, you know, different policies. Um, actually, going out and you know advocating for different things if you go to a restaurant and you realize there is not a braille menu or if you are going somewhere and you see that a ramp or a disabled button should be installed and or you um actually come across someone with a disability, just being courteous and kind goes a long way. Talk to us a little bit. So about, the whole oh, I'm sorry. oh, no. Go oh, ahead. no. You, you just say, oh, uh, see something, say something. You know, if you, that's all about how I want to have an army of disability advocates. Um, you can start with, you know, creating content that is accessible to all users. Yep, Very that's well. it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. What's your sign, by the way? Because you're just so just bubbly. What's your sign? Are you? I am a Gemini. Are you really? Are you May or June? May. Okay. May. Yep, May 29th. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. You're a lot of you just you're just so much fun. Um <laughs> thank you. I you appreciate you really it. are. You really are. Um I want you to talk to us though about the prosthetics process. Yes. Um, so when I was in the hospital, I met a I don't know if I can say his name, but he's a prosthetist. Um, and what they do is they came in and um, they measured me for a socket. So they uh, take some type of plaster and they put it on the missing limb, the residual limb, if you will, and um, try to fit you 
for a leg, a hand, or whatever you may be missing. And then you go through months and months of therapy, learning to try to use these things. And they're extremely expensive. Um, I'm still in the battle with, even though I have federal Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can blank that out if you want to, but <laughs> um, I self-advocacy is important because I advocate for them, advocate consistently for everything. Um, one of the, I guess, insurance persons was telling me that they were going to deny the hand that I wanted with articulating digits. And I told that person, um, that's easy for you to say because you have two working hands. Um, and what I do as an engineer, I need a hand that opens and closes is not going to fully uh, help me the way I need to, but they considered that technology investigational. And it's a $57,000 prosthetic. So my leg is about 26. So I'm just like walking around with cars, it's like basically. And it's just like, oh man. But um, yes, uh, they are expensive. Um, you will have to get resized, refitted, a new one all the time for different reasons, weight gain, um, weight loss. We have different socks that we can put on, but weight loss, uh, technology updates, um, different things that you may want. Um, and just still fighting the battle for the hand that I actually need and want. So just getting things uh, for people with disabilities so we can live an independent life with dignity um, is, a, is a big thing. So the U.S. healthcare system, there's a lot of work that that needs to be done. There. Definitely a lot of work. You know, um, there was a show on uh, possibly probably like last year it was on TLC and it was called Body Parts. And there was a prosthetist. I think that's how you say it. Did I say it correctly? Yeah. And, yeah, it's a um, She was uh, giving this woman who had, um, had you know, gone through something similar as you had, and uh, she was giving her her hands because she just wanted to hug her son, you know? And I just thought it was just a really brilliant story. It was a really brilliant show, a really brilliant thing to see. And I hope that um, the right people hear this and watch this and something can be done about the red tape that you have to go through just to get what's going to allow you to live your life in the most efficient and the most effective way possible. Yes. What advice, though, would you give someone watching or listening who's going through something similar? You know, um, when I was an abled person, I had bad days. But as a person with a disability, I have incapacitated days. So the difference was what made me realize is that when you're having a bad day, it's just a bad day, not a bad life. And it sounds cliche, but this too shall pass. Um, you don't know how strong you are until being strong is the only option. So being grateful for the little things and seeing a world, a future beyond what you physically see. May your mind see further than your physical capability or the situation that is present. Tell us about adaptive clothing. Wow. Adaptive clothing. Um, I am actually, I, that's one of the things I want to do is create adaptive clothing, but that is clothing that anybody can wear. For example, instead of utilizing small buttons, you would use Velcro or um, clothing for people that are wheelchair users that's easier to put on and take off. 
So again, designing for the eight and the 80 year old. What are some ways that people who may not be disabled can help create a more accessible world for those who are? Um, being an advocate or an ally. Um, you know, if you are actually have your own platform speaking on different issues, um, actually volunteering in the community to support those that are disabled um, or the elderly or just simply um, spreading the message in living by example and, you know, just working towards equality for all. I think we can and we will create an equitable society. Now, how can we fight ableism? Wow, that's a big one. Um, because before I was disabled, I didn't even know words in my vocabulary was promoting ableism. Like, for example, just word choices that you use. Um, instead of saying, oh, that is so retarded. You can find a better way to describe something. Um Actually, the media plays a huge part in that. We need um, more disabled representation. We're always, when you do see someone with a disability, you always see them cast as like overcoming some illness. We're never the love interest or matter of fact, um, those with disabilities is about globally 1 billion people. But when was the last time you've ever seen a disabled anchor, have you? Or I also think we need a a disabled princess. We need a wheelchair, a, a Disney princess in a wheelchair. We need positive representation, positive language, positive um, promotion and just, or just giving content creators with, with disabilities actually casting those those people in those roles right because we know our lives better than anyone who does research and those are people that are actors so fair wages for people who you can get people to do consultations um site visits and things of that nature and pay people with the experience to help you elevate your bottom line your business Y'all heard what she said, right? Okay. I'm just going to take this moment, Chandra, um, to be informative again. Because that's what I do as a journalist. Informative. If you live in the tri-state, you're familiar with the sound I just played. Flex, Cosmic Kev, it is what it is. I'm not sorry. This is important. I'm going to challenge our Secretary of Defense, Mr. Pete Buttigieg, and Chandra's governor of the great state of Maryland, Mr. Wes Moore, to not only match Chandra's $10,000 goal, but also do something to incorporate the curb cut effect in Maryland and across the United States. It will benefit us all. I'm also talking to you, Mr. Brandon Scott, Baltimore Mayor, Madam Mayor Bowser, DC, all the politicians, and Anna Rundles, PG County, y'all know who y'all are. Go fund dot me forward slash zero four season cool season calm seven six season collective as an amicable all right i saw the the governor he was taking a plunge into the river um he needs to take a plunge into that gofundme and shout out to the special olympics because that's what he was doing it for it was for the special olympics but um yeah i just had to have a moment to to you know, let people know what we have to do. Um, real quickly though, before we wrap up, and this is something I ask all my guests, I like to ask everybody, um, if you had a time machine and you can go back to any point in the past, where would you go and what would you tell yourself? Hmm. 
Wow, that's a great question. Um, if I had a time machine, where would I go? What would I say? I will go back to when I was a little girl in middle school at 12 years old. And I used to get bullied for being a nerd, a geek, and all kinds of other things. Because um, I was really quiet and I sat in front of the class. And I would just tell myself, Don't pay attention to what is happening right now. And everything that you're doing is going to pay off in the future. Being yourself and being the best version of you is the best thing that you can possibly be. Because everybody else in this world is taken. So be you. Shine bright. You are a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful representation of what it is to be resilient. See, I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. And I just blasted everybody. I tried, though. I tried this whole interview. I tried. I mean, I just... Drop those those funk master flex bombs and everything like <laughs> and then here you go. I tried. But you know what? I'll just say this. You might be able to make that time machine because I went on your Facebook page and I saw those formulas. <laughs> so <laughs> those formulas, I was just like, I don't know what these are. This is this is a lot. <laughs> but when you do make that time machine, you let me know. So that I can go back to 2013. And I could buy that Amazon stock. <laughs> so, so let me know so I can go back there and I can do that. But um, wow, thank you so much. Um, what what do you have coming up? Um, if anything, do you have anything uh, coming up you'd like to let everybody know about? Um, yes, um, I have something coming up in May that I know of. Um, it is a farm. I the name escapes me of the farm, but I will be there to um, speak and um, actually um, they want me to sign autographs. Not sure why anyone would want my autograph. Oh, but, come on. Um, Why not? <laughs> Why not? I want you an autograph. <laughs> well, My I first guest who made here. me cry. Oh, <laughs> and really? I'm going to frame it right up. <laughs> you never you never cried before? No. no. Oh. And, I'm, and I mean, I deal with a lot of heavy stuff, but it's just that was just very it's something I needed to hear. Thank you for coming, um, for stopping by. And I, and I, and I, Thank and I you want for you to inviting come back. Me. Listen, I want you to come back as soon as you win the crown. Because <laughs> you're going to win. I just, we have there to manifest, been, we have to claim it. There hasn't been a, like, I don't, I don't know if we should speak on this, but um, there oh, hasn't been a Black person to wear that crown in over 50 years. There's only been one. I think it's time. It's been time. I want you to let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Um, yes, I am currently on Facebook. Um, I have the Miss Wheelchair Maryland Facebook, Miss Wheelchair Maryland 2023. Um, I, you can also find my contact information on the Miss Marilyn website and um, my email address if you would like to um, chat or interview is Chandra C. Smith at iCloud.com. That is Chandra C. Smith at iCloud.com. Wait a minute. This whole interview, I've been calling you Chandra and it's Chandra. 
Yes, it's Jackie Chan with a drop. Chandra. <laughs> only on the Chris David show, I tell you. Only on Chandra. I am so sorry for that. Thank you for no finally letting me know. I mean, me, the, the guy named Chris with no H in his name, you know, it, I get on people every show. That's like, actually my dad's name, Chris. Wow. Cool. Mm -hmm. and, and God bless him. Wow. Chandra. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, thanks again for stopping by. I, you know, we we got a little bit of a late start, but that's okay because you had stuff going on. I was trying to like edit hashtags over here. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> I had no idea that Instagram only lets you put up thirty hashtags. I had more than that for one of my my um, interviews. So whatever. I listen. We're all learning here. It's all a learning thing. But everybody, give it up for Ms. Wheelchair Maryland, Ms. Chandra Smith, not Chandra. Thank Chandra. you so much. Everybody That's give it up. And um, let me give it up to all of you for coming back on the show. You know, I, I stick the shit up a little bit on the show. You know. But I want you to tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your doctor. Tell everyone at the committee for Ms. Wheelchair 2023 to watch and listen and tell everyone they know to watch and listen to the Chris David Show. I want you guys to visit Chris David, chrisdavidshow.com and there you'll find links to all of our platforms. And also, if you know a phenomenal woman like Chandra, who you'd like to see featured on my show, just let us know. Chris with no H, David like David Bowie Merlin. Okay, I got to say Merlin like the Maryland folks. Um, <laughs> show.com. And you can also support Chandra and Chandra Smith, I'm sorry, and her journey to becoming Ms. Wheelchair America 2023. Visit gofund.me forward slash 04, season Couture, season Christian Dior, 76, season Cavalli, A as in Armani. Once again, that's gofund.me forward slash 04, CC 76 CA. Now go out there and be the change you seek. Everybody be well. And listen, Kendra, I'm a hustler. We're going to get you out here.